Now go to the book of Zechariah. Zechariah. Now here's the question. The question is, how do you get that many people who are rebellious and sin against God? So go to Zechariah 14. Zechariah 14. Because remember, who's en the ones who are entering uh, the millennial kingdom over here of a thousand years long, this 1,000 year reign of the Lord Jesus Christ, it should go to the saved believers. So it's going to be Christians and it's going to be tribulation saints. But then, if it's saved people, then how is it that there are lost people over here, right? So then how do we get the lost people? So then here's the answer to this, okay? The answer to this is as follows. So Zechariah 14 will show you that not everybody is a saved believer, actually. We're going to look at Zechariah ch chapter 14. And we're going to look at verse, let's see over here. We're going to look at verse 16. It shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem. Did you read that? So notice that, remember, do you remember Revelation 19? Or did you forget that? Revelation 19, which took place over here, God was uh, in Armageddon against the nations, right? And then also he had to do judgment of nations. Do you remember that? Matthew 25, do you recall that? But when he's judging the nations, see that? That's the word. Zechariah says, left of all the nations. So it's not everybody. So there are going to be leftovers here who are going to go through the millennium. That's the idea. Now the question is this. The question is, in Matthew 25, you can turn over there if you want to for some of you who are familiar with the passage, but I'm just going to explain it for time's sake. Matthew 25, God divides two groups, all right? Those who took care of the Jews, those who did not take care of the Jews. Those who failed to take care of the Jews, those who are part of the Antichrist system, they were uh, damned for eternity. So then that, that means then there should be no unbeliever around. That should be the idea. But here's the thing, Matthew 25, shows its people who actually, when they were supposed to help out the Jew, when they had the opportunity, they rejected it. So basically, if a Jew seeks out help and then that person says, no, I don't help you, then that person is the one who goes to hell. A second thing is this too. A second thing is not everybody, now you conspiracy theorists want to hear this, not everyone will take the mark of the beast. There will be unbelievers who will not take the mark of the beast. Now go to the book of uh, Daniel. Go to Daniel. Daniel 11. What's your proof text for that? The proof text is uh, Revelation 14. Whosoever, anybody, anybody who took the mark in his image, they were, they were, they were cast, they were damned. So then how is there left of nations who uh, went against Jerusalem then? Right? Look at Daniel chapter 11. Look at this. Not everybody joins the Antichrist side. Look at Daniel chapter 11. And then verse uh, 39. This is the Antichrist. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many, and shall divide the land for a gain. But look at this one, verse 41. He shall enter also into the glorious land, and what? Many countries shall be overthrown, but what? These shall escape out of his hand, out of his hand, even Edom and Moab and the chief of the children of Ammon. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries and the land of Egypt shall not escape, etc., uh, etc. Et Did you remember Revelation prior to Revelation 19? It's not just the Antichrist nations. There's another group, remember, that the devil would use? Rogue nations, remember that? The rogue nations. But we see these rogue nations again. Where do they come out again? Gog and Magog. 
Remember the rogue nations we're referring to, we saw the communist allies like China, for example, was in there. Uh, we saw how Russia and it, the Muslim nations could be connected to that as well. So, we see over here that those who are left and then who do the war against uh, the nation of Israel, those who try to attack this, is referring to the rogue nations, like I mentioned to you before. Because they don't join the Antichrist system. It's apparent in current events, there are nations who don't go along with the United Nations system. You notice that? And then look at the current nations who don't get along with them, right? That will do it. So notice that the rogue nations, they're going to be, they're the ones who are involved with Gog and Magog. Why? Because they were always rogue. They were always rebels. They never uh, liked uh, the system, the government. And then when God takes over the world, they continue that rebellious streak of, I don't like to follow the government. I don't want to comply. Now, who am I speaking to? Does that sound like a typical conspiracy theorist? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm not going to take the mark of the beast. I'm not going to wear masks. I'm not going to do the vaccines. And you Christians are something else for some of you who would do that. And uh, I'm not going to be the one. Yeah, we're going to be the ones raptured and you left behind. And you will continue that rebellious streak where you may not partake in the mark of the beast. But you, because of that rebellious streak where you don't like a government system, when God rules over, you're pent up even more. Because his rule is a military dictatorship. I don't like how he told me, you know, what I'm supposed to do, what I can't watch. I'm a typical American man. This goes against my constitutional rights. Blah, 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 blah. And then God, he's, and then guess what? Some of these guys, some of these conspiracy theorists, they defend Russia. You notice that? They try to defend Russia, some of them. Is that an eye-opener for some of you guys involved in conspiracy theorists, you onliners? Better watch out for that mess. I keep telling you guys, you better get off that internet and get your nose in the book. You better, get, you better be active in a Bible-believing church, not active in YouTube, not active in re rebels. Amen. Hang around rebels, you will develop rebellion. Right. Hang around Bible-believing Christians who live in the spirit of unity, love, peace, soul-winning, street-preaching, doctrine, growing in doctrine. That's the kind of influence you'll get. What's the, the mentality of the internet and conspiracies is rebellion, rebel, rebel, rebel. Now, I'm sorry if I hurt some of your onliners' feelings, but I hope you remember my sermon about sensitivity. See, doesn't make sense. I didn't come here for popularity to gain a following. I came here to teach truth. Why? Because I care for you guys. I wouldn't teach this if I didn't care for you guys. I want you guys to have truth, not a lie, not something that appeals your flesh. Now go to Zechariah 14 again. Zechariah 14. All right, so if your hand's over there, let's look at what's left of all the nations and what they do. Look at verse 16. Uh, Look at verse 16, left of all nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. Look at that, they have, they're all forced to follow God's worship system. Well, I'm not going to comply. That's, the, that's brutal government. And look at verse uh, 17, it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And the family of Egypt uh, go not up and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague. Remember, their nation was the one that the Antichrist had trouble with at Daniel 11. Remember that? Yeah. See that? There are leftovers. Wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. All right, so that's one. There's plenty of people who is not going to comply with the Antichrist system. And then they're going to be rebellious against God. So see, just because you believe in conspiracy doesn't mean that you're not deceived by the devil. That's right. The devil will deceive you, those who didn't comply with the Antichrist system, at Gog and Magog. He'll get you either way. So you better watch out for that mess. 
That's why I keep saying that you have to be involved in the King James only dispensational Bible believing church. If you're intending that kind of a church, you won't fall prey to any working of the devil out there. Now, uh, being in that, uh, that's one group of people. The second group of people is going to be, notice it says children, right? So obviously there's going to be offspring. And you give it a thousand years, that's going to be a lot of people. Oh, yeah. And no matter what the first generation does, history teaches us that when you give it about a century, the next generations will make it worse. That's why you parents have to take, raise up your children seriously. Because if you think that, that your children is okay now, they're a little bit watered down, they may not be as strong as me, but they're okay, then think about their children. Then think about their children after that. It's going to deteriorate. And give it 1,000 years, you get people who side with Satan himself. All right. Now, uh, the last thing that I want to cover, man, there's so much interesting deep doctrines, but I can't go through all of it. So I'm going to talk about one more deep doctrine, which is interesting. Now, notice that the lifespan is a hundred years, so people can die in the millennium. Do you realize that? So during the 1,000 year reign of God, during this leftover time, there's going to be people who die. So then, the question is, if there are people who die, where do they go? So where do they go after they die? That's the question, right? Ah, this is where it gets interesting over here. Okay, so some of you may have forgotten about this place. Remember Revelation chapter 6? Souls under the altar? All right, now the souls under the altar, if you recall... That was referring to where? That was referring to paradise opening up during the tribulation. Now remember what paradise means? Paradise, what it means is an intermediate state. An intermediate state where the souls go. Now, throughout your Bible, remember my dispensationalism teachings, paradise was considered to be that intermediate state where it was a temporary residence where souls resided until they can either go to, uh, they can go to heaven after that uh, or gain eternal life throughout uh, the rest of the world time span. Now, this is going to continue throughout the millennium then. Because where else do they go when they die, right? If they die and they're saved people, where else do they go? So then, paradise, the definition itself is that meaning. It's that intermediate state where the souls go. So then the souls, they'll go down to paradise over here during the millennium. And then they're going to be waiting when God does that second resurrection. In that second resurrection, he's calling up the souls. And then over there, he's going to determine if they can go to heaven or to hell because he's going to judge them according to their works. Now, remember, uh, if you go back to Revelation chapter 20, if they have uh, partaking in the first resurrection, Revelation chapter 20, verse 6, they uh, have no second death, and they reign with him a thousand years long. You see that? So these people, the first resurrection is applying to, it's going to apply to the people who don't die. That's the idea. But then you got the leftover. You got the offspring. There's so many people that time. And they don't have that privilege. And so then these people throughout that time, they can die, and then the Lord's going to put them in paradise. And then at the great white throne judgment, which is the end of the millennium, so when he sets up his great white throne judgment over here, he's going to judge them according to their works and then determine their salvation through there. And then the rest of the millennium and the people who went through the tribulation and the old, uh, pro perhaps the Old Testament saints as well, they get their rewards during this timeline, during the great white throne judgment. Now, the, I will explain a lot more about this great white throne judgment on how the judgment works in our next Revelation study. 
So I'll cover that in our next Revelation study. But this is the only place that I can think of where they're going to go after they die. Because paradise, the definition itself shows that. Not only that, Revelation 6 showed you paradise reopening again. I showed you that one as well. So that would be the only explanation. Because uh, here's the thing. If Revelation 6, use your head. If Revelation 6, paradise was opened and operating during the tribulation, the Bible never said it closed. The only time it will mention paradise where it seems like it closed is until Revelation chapter 21, 22. It says paradise is where? Over there in eternity. Where everything's all together again. Okay, so I hope that you enjoyed your studies. We'll cover more in our uh, next Revelation study verse by verse. So next Revelation verse by verse, I'm going to talk about the Dead Sea, fallen angels, where they're residing underneath the sea, the Great White Throne Judgment, where you're going to act as jury, and how the King James Bible will play a part with the jury. So we're going to cover a lot more of those doctrines too.